Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Keep us, O Lord, constant in faith and zealous in witness, that like thy servant William Laud, we may live in thy fear, die in thy favor, and rest in thy peace. For the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not, if you do not have the discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we have human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not even be more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone, and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this afternoon is a portion of Psalm 73. We will recite together verses 24 through 29 of Psalm 73, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 688, verses 24 through 29, page 688. <clears throat> you will guide me by your counsel, and, and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good for me to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will speak of all your works 
in the gates of the city of Zion. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's old ha own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Now, those of you who are regulars at Daily Mass when I've preached before on Saints' Days know that I might occasionally have opinions on some of the decisions the powers that be have made about our liturgical calendar and the commemorations that we honor. And it's not as if any system in the world is perfect. I don't look to Eastern Orthodox Church or the Roman Catholic Church or any of those as some paradigm of perfection. But it just, it's always astounding to me sometimes, uh, especially knowing some people who serve on the committees that determine these sorts of things, how folks from history and from our present time end up in our commemoration of, uh, of the calendar of the saints. And today we honor in the church William Laud, who indeed is worthy of study and in many ways worthy of great reverence. I am not sure I ever would use the word saint to describe him, and I'm not sure that he would use the word to describe himself. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do is hold gently, I suppose, our commemoration of the various figures for whom we are indebted, or to whom we are indebted for great examples of faithfulness or um, great legacy of learning in the church. And I think that's where I can sit alongside William Long as my brother in Christ, as a person who certainly contributed great learning and wisdom and some good examples to us of what it is to lead a noble and dedicated Christian life. Now, law, of course, very importantly, is a piece of our own Anglican history and inheritance, so certainly somewhat worth learning about and thinking, uh, thinking about things with. And he was an Archbishop of Canterbury, of course, which is a very important role within the church. And he was one of the people who defined uh, the history of Anglicanism in a way that is uh, undeniable for those of us who consider ourselves students and inheritors of history today. So I'll tell you a little bit about him, and then maybe we can pray with him together and perhaps ask for his intercession before the throne of Almighty God, because certainly if there were things that he didn't know in his earthly existence, he is aware of them now, that he is beholding God face to face, which really is all that any of us can hope for. Uh, so William Laud, born in 1573, became Archbishop of Canterbury in 1633, and uh, he was intimately connected with Charles I. He was uh, the principal ecclesiastical advisor and uh, was very prominent in a generation of churchmen who disliked many of the ritual practices which had developed during the reign of Elizabeth I, and who was bitterly opposed by the Puritans. So he's sort of already occupying this Anglican middle way, it sounds like here. He's not a friend of the Puritans, but certainly not a friend of the ritualists, and maybe he's attempting to steer them towards something a little bit uh, more in between. Now, Law believed the Church of England to be in direct continuity with the medieval church. This is just going to be my commentary on this. I agree with that. That's very, that's very good. Uh, and he stressed the unity of church and state. That's a bit more complicated. Exalting the role of the king as the supreme governor. 
Again, I'll leave that uh, aside for a moment. He emphasized the priesthood and the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist, and caused consternation by insisting on the reverencing of the altar, returning it to its pre-Reformation position against the east wall of the church and hedging it about with rails. As the head of the courts of high, the High Commission and Star Chamber, Laud was abhorred for the harsh sentencing, harsh sentencing of prominent Puritans. His identification with the unpopular policies of King Charles, his support of the war against Scotland in 1640, and his efforts to make the church independent of Parliament made him widely disliked. He was eventually impeached for treason by the Long Parliament in 1640 and finally beheaded on January 10th, 1645. His reputation has remained controversial to this day, honored as a martyr and condemned as an intolerant bigot. He was compassionate in his defense of the rights of the common people, but was also honest about and loyal to the king. And he was, a very, he was very committed to the divine right of kings. So what we have here is the story of a human life, right? This is the story of a human life. And Many lessons to be drawn from William Law, to be sure, but I think, I think what's inspiring to us today, and what we can maybe hold to, is that Law was a servant of God and a human being like any other, who did his best to allow his heart to be converted to service of the gospel of Christ. Now, there are certain things in his life and legacy that perhaps some of us would think are a grand idea. Maybe we think, yes, absolutely, he was on to something regarding the sacraments or the priesthood or the role of the church. Maybe some of us could look at some of his opinions and think, well, you know, actually, that doesn't seem to be very productive or edifying at all. How could one possibly believe that you should go to war with Scotland in 1640? I can't imagine thinking that's a great course of action. And that's neither here nor there. Because the lesson I think with William Laud and with many of the folks we meet throughout this liturgical, our calendar of liturgical commemorations, is that sometimes the noble work human life is doing the best we can to allow our hearts to be submitted to the discipline of the church and converted by the gospel. Sometimes we'll hear God quite clearly within that work and we'll get it right. Other times we might hear something else a bit more loudly than the spirit. And there may be some things that we get wrong. All of our lives are the collection of minute by minute decisions we make to align ourselves with the heart of Jesus or to not. To listen deeply and with intent to the call of the Holy Spirit, or to maybe listen to something else, perhaps our own self-interest. Some of us have stretches of seasons where we're doing one or the other for, you know, you know we're, we're aligning ourselves with God quite well for a particular amount of time, and maybe we can look back on a part of our lives when we think, you know, maybe we weren't actually submitting ourselves to the discipline and grace of the church. And that is a human life. Our letter to the Hebrews today talks about discipline and talks about how sometimes it can feel like something that's actually damaging us, but truly, if it's a discipline that's enacted through the heart of the gospel, it is something that will bring us closer to the fruitfulness of life in Christ. Discipline might feel strange, conversion of heart might feel difficult, but ultimately, if we are doing, <clears throat> excuse me, if we are doing it alongside the gospel, if we're doing it hand in hand with Christ, if we're doing it as we pray in earnest and clear the detritus from our hearts so that we're able to better hear the voice of God, then ultimately what we're doing is allowing Christ to build our lives. We are allowing ourselves to be submitted through that process of sanctification. Now, ultimately, perfection may not be within our grasp this side of the eschaton, but we are invited day by day to turn every decision we make over to Jesus. We're invited to pray with every single minute when we're invited to make a decision or, or respond to something. Every minute is an opportunity, like William Laud recognized, to do something for the gospel of Christ. To make a decision, perhaps in a way that our self-interest would not have us make, in the interest of aligning ourselves closer with that grace of God. I love the collect for William Law today. Did you catch that at the very beginning of Mass? I think this ultimately sums up for us the goal of any human life, mixed as they might be. The collect prays, keep us, Lord, in constant faith, 
zealous in witness, that like my servant William Bard, we may live in thy fear, die in thy favor, and rest in thy peace. Live in thy fear, die in thy favor, and rest in thy peace. Whatever William Laud may have done or not done that we may like or dislike, I think we can fairly say that he did these things. And it is my prayer that each one of us, whatever decisions we're called to make, whatever witnesses to the gospel we're called to stand for, that we will live in God's fear, in awe of him, that eventually we will die in his favor, embraced by the promises of his resurrection, and that ultimately we all may rest in his peace, a good beginning for any saintly life, and a fitting end for all of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And now together, let us stand and pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to offer thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially to Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph our president, Kamala our vice president, the members of the Supreme Court and the Congress, and all state and local officials that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all of those people who have been entrusted to us in this place for our prayers, especially Chris, Sue, George, John, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Howard, Will, Clayton, Liz, Barbara, Sam, Hannah, Rick, Anne, Jonathan, Roger, Oliver, Max, James, and Bo, and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. We pray for all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of warfare, violence, fear, or oppression beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace and to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, 
provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. <laughs> Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father of the Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all of his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who in the obedience of thy saints hast given us an example of righteousness, and in their eternal joy a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. 
and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body, and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may attain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather of the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. 
and we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.